Hey everyone, and welcome to another Rope for a Q video and my latest coaching session with Colin Matty Snooker Coaching. Join me as we take a look at this session, which is definitely an improvement on my last session, which if you remember was definitely a bit of a setback, but my performance in this session was a little bit better, but still plenty to work on. So for those of you who don't remember, Colin Matty is a very local WPBSA level two snooker coach in Shrewsbury, which is where I live. I've been going to see him now for about 18 months on and off, but on average, probably about every two months. So I'm guessing this is probably about the sort of eighth or ninth time I've seen him. Each session always starts the same way. And that's a quick discussion about how my snooker has been going since I last saw him. And generally my response was that I feel like I'm queuing a fair bit better than I was last time I saw him. My match play and my safety is definitely on the up. And that was evident when I played my first snooker league match for my local Morebrace A team as a reserve where I managed to pick up my first win in the league through some pretty gritty match play, but also some decent potting. The next thing we do is a warm-up, which is a chance for Colin just to take a quick look at my queuing without really me having to worry too much about trying to do a routine or anything like that. I'm just trying to pot all these randomly spread balls with as few misses as possible. I'm yet to clear this kind of routine. It's probably the main routine I do as a warm-up as opposed to the end of the lineup, which you will have seen a video on recently. I still feel I could probably do it, but I just need to focus on it a bit more. So that might be something I do in the new year. First bit of feedback came from this miss where Colin said I was aiming at the wrong part of the ball. So I guess I probably wasn't lining up properly. But he generally said my stance looked pretty good. I told him I'd try to tweak it slightly by moving my left leg in slightly to sort of give me more of an angle and I think that's helped me get uh, more consistently straight on. But also you don't want to be too reliant on this hand as well so it's sort of striking the right balance. I've also moved my, moved my left leg forward a little bit which kind of helped me. Okay. We also had a couple of discussions about shot choice throughout the routine. This first one was a shot where I felt the screw on and off the cushion was probably the shot to go for. Uh, Colin said, well, there's also the run through for the pink into the corner, uh, but he suggested why don't we mark the shot and try both and see which one works out best. So that's what we did. What you could do as well is play it with a lot of top right hand side. Or you could screw it in. In fact, there isn't a right or wrong shot. No, no, I'll probably, because I feel like rolling it through the probably going to misjudge it and then leave myself with a, a well, thin one. I'll tell you what we'll do then. We'll set this up. I'll do it here. Okay, so we're going to play this shot and we'll work out which one's the best one. So the small run through. Literally a half revolution further, and that's further. Yeah, but because I was going close to pink, I feel like I didn't have a lot of room for error. Right. So that's why we favor, probably favor the screw back shot because because it's going to come off about this angle and go yeah up here, and obviously I've got the loss in the middle as well. If needs to be, but as I say, I'll probably I'll either miss it or well, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> see how it goes. <laughs> From that position, I then play a shot to the middle pocket, which I end up missing, not by a long way, but I do miss it nonetheless. But then Colin brings me back and says, why didn't I not actually play the red I was playing for? Uh, I felt there was too much angle on it, but actually, in hindsight, it was probably the better shot to the middle. And that's possibly a bit of a downfall of doing so many sort of lineup kind of routines is that I tend to favor when actually I shouldn't be afraid of a slight angle because I could probably get better position on the next pot from it. I mean, it's not bad. Yeah. I mean, if I didn't have that one there, I would not be disappointed with that shot, definitely. Absolutely not. But if you play Colin shows me how this pot could be done with a bit of side and ends up with a pretty nice position, which I play on from. Um, so it's just manipulating the cue ball. Don't yeah. be afraid to you know, use a bit of side. slide. Um, so you've got to make camera from there or you can move the cue ball if you want to. No, that's fine. Well, you put it in the middle. How do you know they're doing it, obviously? Yeah. <laughs> Up 
other than that, I played some pretty nice shots in the warm up, and here's a little montage of a few of them. Just happy to get the clock. <laughs> I was going to say, after a shot like that, you deserved a bit of luck. Yeah. Excellent, mate. Very nice indeed. As part of the intro discussion, Colin asked me if there was anything particularly I wanted to work on, and I said cue ball control because I feel like I'm my brakes are breaking down, not because of uh, easy pots missed, but more that I'm not getting ideal position, and it's a sort of gradually creeping into worse and worse position until eventually I do miss a pot. So after the warm-up, we took a look at three different cue ball control routines. And they were all played from the blue spot because I mentioned I've been playing a lot of blues off the spot as part of my 50 break challenge. So he said, well, let's maybe take that on board and let's look at these three routines. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about these routines because I intend to do a separate video for each of them where I show Colin setting up the routine and my first attempt with him and then also my first attempt in the club on my own. But I'm going to show a couple of shots uh, where there was some feedback or some particularly nice shots. Firstly, there was this shot where I forgot to leave a pause before delivering the cue to the cue ball, which I know not everybody thinks is absolutely necessary, but I do find it helps me, certainly in terms of judging pace and also striking the intended part of the cue ball. Unlucky. The reason the cue ball didn't go where you wanted to, when you watch this back, you, know, you didn't put a pause in. Oh, it was right. Quite quick through the ball. So rather than get the spin so it came back, it just sort of. And to be fair, little, until this yeah. point, I felt like I was always putting the pause in. And in hindsight, when watching this video back, I also feel like I played the wrong colour. I think maybe the yellow was the better option. Speaking of wrong colour choice, here's another example from the same routine of where I played what I think is probably the wrong colour. Or at the very least, perhaps not taking enough time to have a look around the table and assess my options because perhaps the yellow to the middle was the better option, as Colin pointed out. And then similar to the warm-up shot, here's a couple of shots where I don't quite line up properly and I'm aiming at the wrong part of the cue ball. And subconsciously I must realise I'm doing it because Colin says I'm slightly steering the cue ball a little bit and because of that I'm queuing yes. across it. So I just need to take a little bit more time to line up properly and then trust that I've lined up properly and deliver the cue straight and not queue across. Try and keep everything perfectly still mate. When you pick your line, try and keep everything nice and straight. where my tip is now, so the two lines meet. I'm looking at that until the very last second. Because I know if I look at that now like that, all I've got to do is keep everything straight and just aim the cue through that part of the ball. Yeah. Um, I think you might be taking your eye off that. Okay. And then try and sort of steer the ball. Um, so two out of seven. But yeah, if you're looking at the point that you're going to hit until the very last second, it makes it much easier to towards <clears throat> there you go nicely done
But to end on a positive, I was very pleased with how my queuing off the cushion is coming along. And whilst it was a bad shot that led me to have to queue off the cushion, I'm pretty pleased with this pot. The next routine is fairly uneventful in the room. Uh, a couple of things happened though that I want to show you. Firstly, was a bit of a laugh, which was that the blue seemed to climb back out of the pocket. Oh, oh. the blue was spat back out. <laughs> I, I saw it go in and then I took my hands off. I still, uh, I'd have given you that, mate. Yeah, that did go in. And Colin did say that he would have given me that pot because it should not have climbed out. And also the routine ended in an unintentional trick shot. Bingo, Colin. And the red, <laughs> What a way to end. Nice, mate. Fantastic. Break from life, eat your heart out, I say. But then came the third of the cue ball control routines, and this was a bit of a turning point for me. Up until this point, I feel like I was playing pretty well in the session, but I got stuck on this black spot pot. Even though it was a red on the black spot, I decided to the put the cue ball about level, trying to get position on the blue, yeah, and, and I just not, could not get this pot right. It took me several attempts and a couple of instructions in terms of ghost ball spotting and all that kind of stuff from Colin until I finally got it right. But I still missed it. Even after this, I've still missed it a couple of times. This was a particularly disappointing because I have been doing a lot of black spot cutting, which is coming up in a future video. But to be fair, I have been favoring the high blacks rather than these, these sort of low blacks. So maybe this is something I need to work on a bit more. I was going to say, if they're, if they're perfectly in line, See, the thing is, I don't know, is the honest answer, because I, 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 you know, we've had this conversation before. That is the question I get all of the time. What am I looking at? How do you know where to hit for it to go in? Yeah, uh, I know the theory of the golf ball <laughs> kind of thing, but I'm trying to, trying to do angle recognition. I mean, I've been playing a lot of these shots, and I feel like I should know the angle by now. Because I miss, what I'll do is I'll miss two, mm. and then I'll do 20 in a row, because I get that. You get the rhythm. But I can't, what I can't do is do it first time. <laughs> You could play well, that. I can't be off in the first time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, I've certainly got are you going to play it with a bit of top right, or how are you going to play that? Yeah, I'll play it with a little bit of top to come off the cushion and, and round. Straight line, you could screw this back because by hitting that side of the ball anyway. Oh, I've opened massively. <laughs> I suppose that kind of proves my point. I was going to say, you don't need to do very much the, uh, for yeah, it to get there. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah did, did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you don't need to hit it very hard because it's going to come up the middle of the table. Before we take a look at the second half of this session, please drop this video a like if you're enjoying it by clicking the thumbs up button below. Also, if you're not already, please consider subscribing to this channel. We are very close to reaching the 1000 subscriber milestone, which would be fantastic if we could reach it in 2023. There'll be an in-video link at the end of the video for you to subscribe, or you can visit the channel page anytime and subscribe if you're watching on your TV, or if you're watching on a browser, just click the subscribe button below the video. Next came a bit of open table practice. Now I've showed you this open table practice routine before. I think I called this previously the perfect chance. Colin calls it the ideal scenario, but the concept is much the same. Basically, the idea is I was to clear the table with as few misses as possible. If I missed, I could have ball in hand. And if I missed a colour, it would go back on its spot as if I potted it anyway, just to make it a little bit easier. Now, I did play pretty poorly in this routine. Perhaps I lost a bit of concentration or a bit of confidence after the previous routine. But yeah, it was a bit of a struggle, this one. The perfect example is this poor shot on this red where I just aimed at the wrong part, as Colin pointed out. Now the problem there is, you hit it perfectly straight, but it had a bit of angle, so you were just aiming at the wrong part of the ball. Yeah. Your cueing is actually pretty good, but I think sometimes you're thinking of other things and you forget to go back to the beginning, which is, how do I bought the ball? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think you just hit it. 
Another thing I'm going to work on once I've shaken all my various ailments off is my weight. Just to give you a bit of an update, I did have the dreaded C word illness uh, a couple of weeks ago, which I'm over, but it has turned into a bit of a chest infection, which uh, is still lingering a little bit. So yeah, basically I'm going to try and work on my weight uh, because I feel like I'm having to get the rest out for shots that I really should be able to stretch for. And if I do stretch over the table, I'm off balance and I'm not playing them very well. I have put a little bit of weight on over the autumn which is not great. So I'm going to work on losing it over the winter so I can hopefully be back to at least where I was last summer by the time we get to the spring. You hear the commentators on the TV all the time say things like they took their eye off that pot. Now, it's something I've never really understood too much, but actually it's something that Colin says I've actually started doing and that may be because I'm actually focusing a little bit more on position, which is a good thing because I'm not just trying to get the pot and then run to safety. I'm actually trying to build breaks. But because of that, I am missing some easy pots because I'm trying too hard, or at least I'm focusing too much on position. Yeah, because you were playing for the right ball there. Yeah. I think, again, you've just took your eyes back off the pot. There was also further discussion on shot choice, particularly about trying to change my mindset. Again, building on the fact that I'm trying to focus more on breaks rather than just getting a red and a colour and then running to safety, is that maybe I should be looking for pots that yield oh. the best position and not necessarily the easiest pots. Again, yeah, possibly a result of playing a few too many uh, lineups or fixed open table routines, yeah. and particularly which not favouring the blue here. all the time, which I have been doing, as you uh, know, green, in my 50 break routine. Because the green's got both of the remaining reds ready. You could play the blue, but again, you've got, a cannon, yeah. you've got to try and avoid the cannon. You could take the blue, but it's a slightly harder control shot with the cue yeah. ball. And you played this like you played it too well. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> And then when I did do that, it gave me a chance to use the Mark Williams rest for the first time and also led to my best break of the open table routine. Oh, that will be the <laughs> The final part of the routine was a just for fun frame versus Colin. I was disappointed again with how I played, so I will probably show a few of Colin's shots too. But bear in mind that he's not out to give me a beating here. He's out to try and make it as fun as possible. If I do make a mistake, he is going to take a few pots. He's certainly not going to give me a chance. He also plays in such a way to try and keep the table open in that he will try and free up awkward balls if they're on the cushion in trying to play his positional shots. And if he does put a red, he'll perhaps go for a colour that's not on its spot to try and get it back on its spot. But even sometimes when I do play what I think is a good safety shot, it's not safe enough. But if I do miss an easy pot, particularly an easy pot on a colour, and get good position, he is going to take a couple of pots and punish me. Here he puts together a nice little mini break and all the time trying to move awkward reds off the cushions.
I then managed to string my best couple of mini breaks from the session, so let's take a look at those now. Very nice. Something I did notice from watching this back was that my bridge hand seemed to have crept further away from the cue ball. And this is not something that Colin brought up in the session, but it has been mentioned in previous sessions, which I had worked on to try and fix, and I thought I had fixed. But looking back on the camera, it seems to have crept back a couple of inches too far, so that's possibly something I need to work on, because I do feel that I'm a little bit more accurate when my hand is closer to the cue ball. And with that, the session draws to a close. Colin did pretty much clear the colors from the green, I think it was. Uh, he did leave me an awkward black to try and finish the frame off, but I didn't manage it. And uh, we ended the session there. If you're in Shropshire or at least the East Midlands area, why not give Colin a chance to try and help your game out? If you're not nearby, then I reckon there's probably uh, a coach near you. There's a pretty good resource on the WPBSA website to try and find your local coach. Let me know in the comments if you have tried coaching or whether or not you would consider trying coaching because I am thinking about putting together a video on the pros and cons of coaching at club amateur level. So it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts and I can incorporate those into the video. I also just wanted to say good luck to Colin. And again, thank you for letting me film the session. Colin is hopefully gonna to graduate to a WPBSA level three coach in the not too distant future. He'll be the first batch of coaches to get this level uh, and it includes some pretty famous names which I'm hopefully I don't want to reveal but will hopefully be revealed fairly soon. If you want to watch the results of a coaching session that did not go quite so well then check out this video which was a real wake-up call for me but put me back on the right track with my practice sessions and also as mentioned previously if you're not already subscribed please click this link in the video to subscribe to the channel. We are on a push to get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2023, and we are really, really close, so your subscription could make a huge difference. That's all from me now, though, and I will see you in the next video.